Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our studio, Piano Cafe Virtual Connect. Today, uh, 13th June, this is the um, day uh, is bank closing in Bangladesh. You know, uh, today uh, in Bangladesh, very shiny. I think in the USA, it's also, uh, also shiny day. Uh, today, Bangladesh is twist day. And uh, we hope you all are well today. Today, we present you best selling author, motivational speaker, and life stagist coach mind body and spirit advocate your inner health builder miss joy weston weston west she is from florida She's from uh, Florida, USA. She is our very younger, um, very, very cutie, um, 75 years, but she looking pretty. She also uh, keep her age in like 30 years. She is very, very cool and for an inspirational coach in US Florida. She has very loyal client in USA. Today, you are astonished. Today, date is 30. Also, this is our program 30, episode number 30. And our motivational guest, Miss Joy Weston. Welcome, ma'am. How is you today? I am joyful. <laughs> I am joyful and delighted. Yes, I know. You are joyful. And uh, I want to say your laughing is cute, ma'am. How is the day in Florida? Is it cool or shiny or rainy? <laughs> All of it, which is so what Florida is about. You can have it sunny and 20 minutes later raining and then sunny, um, which is really quite interesting. But today it happened to begin sunny just moments ago. What is, uh, oh, what is uh, quite interesting, like you, sometimes rainy, sometimes shiny, like... Exactly. I am right. <laughs> exactly. 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 The, reason, the reason that uh, I wanted to come and share with your group is because I am, as you know, in the United States, it's going through a horrific time with this yeah. pandemic. And uh, we have been gently forced, I certainly have, to stay in. I have been in my home since the beginning of March. And um, thank God I have a beautiful home and I have an advantage of a pool and so I can swim and things like that. But it's not so easy because my normal life, as with everyone on this call, has been changed socially, certainly financially, and emotionally. And in the beginning, for all of us, we all thought that somehow it would be handled and somehow we'd get back to our normal lives. But as it keeps rolling along, that has not been the case. So what I wanted to do, and I reached out to Sweda, your amazing president, and decided that I didn't want to do a course for people to pay for. I wanted to give a gift via Sweda, because Sweda has been nothing but generous her whole life to people, so I want, and to me, which I met so many years ago in Ravella on holiday, and we became sisters and have stayed in touch. So I just want you to know. You know, Miss, uh, Miss uh, Sweta, she's my, uh, like my guardian. 
because uh, we have a good relation and uh, she uh, suggests me please connect with joy with son western she is very uh, good uh, inspirational uh, she has something in inner so you connect with her and uh, you can develop when you uh, keep uh, touch with her and she knock you and she uh, encouraged to come uh, my life and i am grateful to ms sweta because she is our uh, president uh, organization president uh, international wedding planner association so i am well, grateful to her she is do lot for mine it's sweet that what i'm going to now speak about which is a perfect thing that we brought sweet into it because she's so sweet is about your heart is about finding a way to take the most unimaginable difficult time that most of us have ever lived through and find the gift in it because if there's one thing that you will learn as you mature is that in the if you can find the gift in the very worst of circumstances when you are in that circumstance look for it then not afterwards not that it's bad to look afterwards but after and say oh that's why i broke up with that guy because he was wrong for me or that's why i had a different job because that wasn't right for me or that's why i fell so i could learn how people hand you know that have problems walking do it we all learn many gifts retrospectively but i'm what i'm bringing you today is the idea of in this unimaginable horrific time a gift that you all have around you that most of us and i know this because i was the first one that wasn't seeing it are not using and that is the gift of this time when there isn't much more we can actually do to bring the income or the way our work was flowing back to what it was for a while So if you have this time instead of constantly being in the sadness of it and the difficulty of the circumstances to use this time as a gift to learn about yourself to do inner work so that you can become a better human being a better man a better woman so when things do clear up and they will I don't know when but they will because nothing lasts forever This is just the way life is. Life is about change. I mean, uh, I have a question. Okay. Last, I have a, I have a question to you. Last four months, uh, whole world passing very bad time. The world car now in totally stops. No exchange tourism. no is change business no any higher lot of people is now jobless main most of them um in our at home at home now okay But here uh, how you passing your day during the covid you because you are 75 your emotional and mental health how you make your mental health strong can you share with us we want to know well this is what i'm tr- this is exactly what i want to bring to you everything you just said was a story that each of us have with a little bit of a different tilt to it we all have some part of our life that's completely been demolished and different than what it was so what i'm saying to you is that now we all know that car doesn't work this doesn't work what are you going to do with your day are you going to sit and do nothing but ruminate and think about how terrible it is or are you going to say well there's nothing i can do today except i can work on myself i can go inside and look at all the things that i have pushed down or pushed away or not dealt with because i was much too busy making a living and much too busy taking care of my family and much too busy socializing and living a life i can't do that now so what can i do and i suggest that you pretend 
that you've been given a staycation where you have been obliged, you have been given the gift of going to a beautiful resort, a spa, an ashram, where the work you're to do is strictly for you. You don't have to be having a concern or be thinking about the other things that you can't do anything about, but you can do something with your mind. I wrote a book, which became a bestseller internationally, called How an Ordinary Woman and an ordinary man, I did too, can have an extraordinary life. The byline was the formula for the art of living well. The formula was something I discovered from something that happened in my life that I realized I had gotten to a position, an incredible place, because I, unknown to me, had been living a formula that when I realized it, every single person in the world uses this formula to create their life. Now, whether they use it positively or negatively is the outcome of their life. So the formula is the thoughts that you focus on, the words that you speak, because your words are nothing more than an audio version of what you're thinking, your actions and your reactions, and whether or not you believe you deserve to have what you want is how each and every one of us creates our life. So when you go back into the events of your life that were spectacular, that were awesome, you created things you didn't even imagine, if you dissect it, you'll see that you focused on it all the time, you spoke about it, how it was going to come out, you did actions and reactions that supported that, and in your heart, you believed it would come to pass. And for things that didn't work out in our lives that were terrible, and I'm not talking about the pandemic, I'm talking about the lives we did. We also had the same thought pattern. We focused on everything that would be bad. We spoke about it in the negative. Our actions and reactions were defensive and offensive negatively. And in our hearts, we believed only negative bad things would come. So in using that formula, in this downtime, when you can't be out there creating your magnificent weddings for clients that are thrilled with what you've done, because that's what your destination weddings were about. I've been to them. I've been bit one suite I gave that was over the top. What are you going to do with this time? Are you going to focus on all that's not going on and sharing your story that you've repeated over and over with people? Or are you going to say, okay, I can't do anything. What can I do? So what I'm suggesting you do is what I am doing. And I speak to all my clients that come to me the same way. Go inside yourself and start looking at the pieces that didn't, haven't served you, a thought pattern that hasn't quite brought you what you've wanted, whether it's been financial and relationships and health or whatever. So what I started to do with my clients that are home is I brought them into something that I fondly called the Michelangelo Project. Why? Because when I studied Michelangelo, I realized that he, his, when he created that exquisite statue of the David that's in Rome, he found, at uh, first he found the most unique and one-of-a-kind piece of marble that he could. So you and I are really each a unique, one-of-a-kind piece of marble. When God created each and one of us, he created us as one of the kind. There will never, ever be anyone exactly like you. Okay? So we each begin with this raw marble. Then what Michelangelo did is he went in and he started to carve away at it to create the basic statue. Your life, that may be in the 30s, or 40s or 50s, that's what you've been doing. You've been carving away and creating a tapestry, a statue of who you want to be. Now, we get to a point that Michelangelo did when he looked at the statue that he'd been carving and realized to make it exquisite, to make it beautiful, he had to go back in with a fine, smaller chipping away thing, whatever you call that, and started to fine tune himself. 
So what I am suggesting to my, one minute, let me just finish. What I'm suggesting to my clients and to your audience is that I want you to start with, I'm going to give you the first and second pieces of the project in a minute, but use this downtime to not waste it and be frustrated and unhappy, but to say what a gift I've been given because there's a gift in every circumstance. And if you look at that gift in the circumstance when you're in it, then you can stay, save yourself so much pain and anguish because on another side, you will see the gift. It could be weeks, months, years later. But if you can do it now in the middle of a problem, oh my God, the difference is amazing. So I'll be done in a second. So what I want you to do is to use this gift of horrible, horrific circumstances and use this downtime for stuff you haven't had the time to do and discover your most beautiful, wonderful self. You had a question before I go on. Yeah, yeah. ma'am, uh, why you started the project, Marcelo Angelo? Why well, you- because, I, he, because Michelangelo is a brilliant, was a brilliant man. He created so many inventions and did so many magnificent forms of art. The man had some level of him of creativity and passion that I want to emulate. Passion is something that is a driving force in my life. When I take something on, when I wrote my books, when I speak, when I do anything with a client, I come from a passion of wanting to make a difference. So that's why I chose Michelangelo. And when I realized that using the David as an example of who we are and how he chipped away at it and how we can chip away at it, because it took years for him to do it, we can make a difference. That's why. Ma'am, uh, what type of project now you are handle or offering for your client and our audience? What would you like me to do to continue what I was going? No, what type of project, what type of project you are organizing now? Marcelo Angelo, what type of project okay, so, you need? Okay, yes. so, all right, okay. So I have a lot of personal clients that yes. would, in normal times would have met me at my office. That was interesting, <laughs> that noise. I have a lot of personal clients that would have met me in my office that are now meeting me via FaceTime uh, as I'm talking to you, uh, working on themselves. So when I came up with this Michelangelo project, I first, as I always do, used me as a guinea pig. I looked at pieces of me as I shared with you, yes, I just turned 75, and um, I am shocked at how unbelievably joyful I am to be at that number. Because retrospectively, I've got to see that by doing this work that I bring to people via my books and my coaching, I have literally created exactly the life and the legacy that I want to leave behind. So since many of you are much younger than I am, I thought if I could give you this gift to use now while you're home and you have the time before you get really busy again, whatever that's months or whatever in your business, you'll come out a better person. You'll be better at your work. You'll be a better partner. You'll be a better parent. You'll just be better. So that's how it all came to pass. So the first thing that I did and the first thing I'm suggesting that all of you do is to write out a mission statement. A mission statement is a statement of who you are, how you want to show up in the world, the difference you want to make in the world with your family, with other with strangers, with people, with your clients. Write out a mission statement. For me, some of the things that were in my mission statement were that I wanted to be the source of life showing up as joy. Now, joy is my name, so that's one level, but I also wanted to be the source of life showing up as joy and love to every person that I ever interact with. Whether it's someone in a market, on a street that I don't even know and I'll never see again, a client, my children, my grandchildren, a partner, this is who I wanted to be. So, and there were many other things in it, but I wanna stay with that because I wanna show you 
where it affected me. These months that I've been in have been as difficult for me as they've been for anyone because I'm very social and I have many, many clients I see and I had large speaking engagements that none of them have happened because I have been in my home since the end of March. So I'm living with my sweetheart and it's 24 seven and 24 seven for anybody that's listening is not easy because we all have our same moods and our same emotions and, and things come up and little things that we may have been able to pass by upset us. And I got to see that I wasn't always being joyful. I wasn't always being loving. And my mission statement, that was at the top of it. So it made me realize that I needed to go inside myself and look at why I was allowing that to be. Why was that okay today if my mission statement said I wanted to be the opposite? And once I started doing this work and started going in, I found things inside of me that I had buried because it was easier to bury it. And I got very busy with a busy life and saw that a lot of my limitations or emotional behavior was things I picked up from my parents or my grandparents or my spiritual, you know, uh, leaders. And it really wasn't how I believed. And it really wasn't good for me. But I had literally dragged those beliefs with me, my life. And now here I am at a chance that I have to polish it because I have this time, as you all do. And I made myself look at it. And there were tears and there was sadness that I hadn't discovered before because I've been doing this work for decades and I've worked with thousands of people. And yet here I was having these limitations. But I saw it as a gift. The tears came with a joy and a gift that I could now polish my statue. I could polish my own unique piece of marble. I could go in and carve away at it. So that's what I'm bringing to you. The motivation I'm bringing to you is every story that you began with, we all have our bad stories. Instead, choose to say, you know what? She's right. I can't do anything more than I'm doing. What am I going to do with this time? How bad if I work on me? How bad if I become a better father, a better lover, a better husband, a better, uh, you know, uh, manager with, with my clients when I come out by re refocusing on me, polishing me. So I have many different things on here that I went into. Each question, I would go for a walk. I take meditative walks which I highly suggest you do. Everybody here has got to take care of themselves. You've got to take self-care really seriously. You've got to eat right. You've got to exercise. I don't care if you're in your house, walk around your house for 30 minutes. You need walk. Do you need to keep yourself as healthy to fight off what's out there? And so part of what I would do is take meditative walks. And on one walk, I... I went on the walk realizing that I was may had made was almost making an excuse that morning not to take the walk, even though I knew how great I felt afterwards. And then finally, I just got myself up and put my sneakers on and went. And during the walk, I started thinking to myself, if you, which you did, asked me to come to your place at a certain time, which I did, and show up, which I did, I would do that. Most of us could say, if you ask me to do something, I would do that. I'm a show up kind of person. But the question I asked myself, and I, want, and I want your listeners to ask themselves, how are you showing up for yourself? How many times do you make a promise to yourself that you break? You're going to eat well, or you're going to diet, or you're going to exercise, or you're going to read, or you're going to do the spiritual work, and then something gets in the way and you don't do it. How many times do we do that to ourselves? And if anyone calls says they don't, they're full of, you know what? So if there's questions, if there's something that, you're, that you know in your heart, that your soul, that your inner wisdom is telling you to do, but you don't do it, why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you honoring yourself as much as you would if I asked you? 
and I'm not happy, anywhere near as important as you are to yourself. These are the kind of questions my Michelangelo project had me do. I keep asking myself the serious question, you know, what can I do to make a difference that makes me feel good? Not just makes you feel good, but I feel good. Because when you make a difference, when you're feeding your passion, everybody wins. You're doing this because you want to do something with your time. You want to bring gifts to the people you're working for. I know, without even knowing you in your heart, it's bringing you as much joy as is the people that bother to listen and use it. That's what I'm talking about. Ask yourself what you're doing. Not focus on what you can't do, what's not going right, but what can you do? How can you polish your stone? Thank you, ma'am. Very good motivational uh, suggestion you are shared with us. We are very happy today and we are grateful to you. You have given us a lot of time today. Already uh, it's 25 minutes. We don't know how it's run. Maybe time run this way. Time and tide wait for none. There's I want to tell you something, sweetheart. Before you snap your fingers, you're going to be my age if you're lucky, if God is with you. So I'm giving you this gift now. Imagine if you take this in. If you start working on your inner self, start asking yourself questions like, am I living my truth or my mother or father's truth? And if it's not your truth, making it your truth, imagine what your life will look like. Imagine the gifts you will bring from the universe. Because the law of attraction is what you put out, you'll get back. When I am not in a loving space, I feel that pain in me because it's not going, I know intellectually from all the work I've done, I'm not going to bring it back to me. So I immediately find, immediately, is sometimes immediately takes a lot longer than, than I want it. But as soon as I can, I make myself find a way to be more loving. I change my thoughts. I reframe them. I speak it differently. I do a, an action. I, I call someone on the phone that I know is alone. I do something nice that I know my sweetheart care about. I uh, uh, th thank people who have done something for me, by the way, because I know what I've done in that moment is I've opened up the funnel from the universe and the gifts that are there for me to start flowing again. When I'm negative, they cl you close it off. It's as if you put a steel bar to the flood that's coming to you. And, when, and what you need to do is when you have the courage to remove it, to start getting the flow again by doing loving, caring things for yourself and for others. It's as old as, as the universe love. And yet we take that word so lightly. We think it's about romance. We think it's about touching and kissing, but it's not that. It's about a feeling in you. It's about a caring for others and yourself really not for what you're going to benefit from it, but because it makes you feel good. And then it bounces right back on you. It's like light. It like the, the sun shines on you all the time because that's the, wor the way you're walking. Viewers, you are already hearing the most important piece that is only kiss or task that is not a life. Life is that where you are get some feelings in your insides and you are caring for someone else or you are truth on your passion. So today Definitely very fruitful uh, discussion with Miss Joy because light when in around the sea lighthouse shows the way and I think Miss Joy like a lighthouse when you are in dark in the middle of the sea then she worked 
as a lighthouse like in this covid situation why are everyone now in frustrated how they are um, uh, improving their life how we earn money but this is not life right now i want to i want to give you a little tip by the way which is yes. business oriented so your people can relate to this one of the things that i have been doing with my um extensive client uh tell is reaching out to people who are no longer working with me because they've graduated so to speak just to let them know that I'm thinking at them and I hope they're doing well so i suggest that every one of your listeners that is part of your wedding destination planning even clients that have you that their weddings are done and over with go through your list and just say i want you to know i was thinking of you i hope you're going through this time well number 1 you'll feel good number 2 they'll feel good that you're thinking of them and some of those people just might when things change have a friend or someone and think you know what you got to call this person because they're really good people so it's a win 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 sharing love It doesn't matter that that person isn't going to do another wedding with you. You want to thank them because they did you that you were in your life and you're thinking of them. You hope they're well and not even not that business is never mentioned, just thinking of you. And I've gotten beautiful things back from these people. In fact, I've gotten acknowledgments about who I am, which that's not what I was looking for and that really felt good too. a oh, very good thing because um uh, now we are uh, everyone we have no inside there is the uh, diamond which we want to need to polish but one thing now we are act as a machine we have no feelings we have no caring just we living our life for touch and kiss and uh, gossiping and mobile gaming this is our life we are all done this as a like as a machine but what you are say that is the motivational that share and care which i um try to follow when i start this program at the beginning when my episode number 1 when this covid is uh, starting when i am thinking when i am uh, lay down on my bed what i am doing what i am doing i am frustrated then i choosing this uh, open world this is lot of opportunity are waiting for us you so know that, so that's exactly what you want to inspire and encourage everyone that you can reach and tell them to share this with everyone at least the essence of it with everyone they know because that is only thing truly the only thing that is going to save us to get to the other side because if we give in to the anger and the hate and the dividing which is huge in the united states which we've got politics going on it's it's really going to tear us apart so what i need to do is i certainly have my opinions and they know it and then i go and i do inner work and i just remind myself and i walk around and i talk to god and i look for answers i ask questions and i get answers and they always come back to the same thing and the same thing is find a way to love whatever it is you can whoever it is you can and give it it could be the stranger you know if you go out to do the shopping thank that person that's standing there and working so you can get food let them know how much you appreciate them let them you know anybody as i said your past clients let anybody that's anywhere in the realm of your life feel your appreciation your gratitude your love it only will come back to you in the most amazing ways and there's no doubt in my mind that when this is all past and done i will be a better woman for it and you and your audience will be better as well and uh, i want to say i am lucky 
that when I is starting to do this program for mankind, man in expression, then everyone uh, make the hour. My program uh, I done for awareness. You know, today my episode number is 3030. Today you are my guest and open world give you in my audience. And today I am live with you, Joy Weston. And she are you is- so, uh, are, you, are you feeling my love? Yes. Are, are you feeling my love? I want you to feel my love. And then you- Yes. Spread it through your house and through the next, and anyone you see today. I had a suggestion and I, you will, however you choose to put this out, because I don't really know how it works, but I would be more than willing to give the gift of me to your group. This is, I'm not looking for business to ask questions about the journey, to go through it with me, to either write to you. I think they should begin with you. And if they want to get to me, you can have them send me through Facebook Messenger or you can uh, compile it and then I can answer it and we can do a follow up where they can go deeper with their work because nobody's going out for a while. So we have the time. And I'm willing to do that. If I okay. around the world, how wonderful. Thank you, uh, Ms. Joy. Uh, audience, you already hear that uh, you can ask why journey? Why we are journey in this beautiful planet? Why we are? Why God create us? Who we are? And what is our duty? Please, if you want, to hear more please come to messenger miss joy or me anyone no problem and you can um, getting very easy on www dot please you tell joy wilson dot com so I, not and that my email address as well, joy at joyweston.com. And I just want to make sure that I say one more thing. The first thing everybody should do that's on this call and that shares this call with someone is take the time to write your own mission statement, who you want to be, what is your legacy you want to leave, how you want your children, your grandchildren, your friends, clients to see you and detail it. And don't worry if the first one, if later you think something else, this is not a one-time thing. You, I have refined mine many times, but use that as your guiding light, as your North Star for all the inter questions you have. And you'll be so surprised at what comes up when you are, when that's your mission state. And then you see, oh my gosh, just now I didn't do that. I did just the opposite. It's a wonderful way to call yourself to task. Thank you, uh, viewers. Be with us because we are starting to do something different, which bring something good for us. That's why today we are, and we are both in one audience. Miss Joy Wilson and me. Today we try to give you some idea. Miss Joy Wilson share her experience, share motivational speech. So I requesting you, please try to know yourself why this journey. Thank you, ma'am. Be with us and last message. I said, can you think of anything truly, truly that's more important than each of us knowing ourselves? What could be more important than each of us polishing our own beautiful piece of marble, chipping away at the things that don't work and then polishing again? What could be more important? Because I want to tell you something, no matter how successful any of you are, there will come a day when someone won't know you from your success. 
viewer. Uh, uh, you're a little old man or a little old lady, and you'll only be left with you. So why not create the you that you're left with at your age and all the years to come? So when you come to my age and pass, you really like who you are, not because it's of ego, but because you did the work. You did the work on yourself. You have a right to love yourself completely because you didn't just grow into this. You became exactly what your mission statement was. It's a pretty cool thing, don't you think? Yeah, thank you, viewers. Uh, be with us. We are back again soon. Very short time. And watch our next program. Thank you and good night. Ma'am, thank you for this. Okay, great day. Thanks to everyone. Uh, yeah. Have a joyful day.